Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to discuss how you can set up a backup and recovery plan for your Microsoft 365 environment. We'll also talk about why you need to protect this data and how easy it is to get it done with Synology. I'm your speaker today. My name is Dave Russ, and I'm a senior technical account manager here at Synology. To give you a brief overview, Synology is primarily a network attached storage company. So we provide data storage, backup, as well as a ton of other functionality. By purchasing Synology products, you get both the hardware and the software that you need to store and backup your data, including with Microsoft 365. One customer who implemented an M365 backup strategy with Synology was a vocational college. They had 18,000 students and 1,000 faculty, and they needed a way to back up their M365 data. So they needed 60,000 email accounts, 30,000 OneDrive accounts, and 10,000 SharePoint sites backed up. And this college realized that they were using M365 data a ton more since their students were working remotely. They needed to keep both current and former student data and they realized that just having the data in M365 was not the same as having it backed up, so they turned to Synology. We were able to set them up with a device so that they could back up their M365 data at their local site with a rack-mounted device. This enabled them to satisfy their retention goals and recover from accidental deletions of data. It also reduced the time that admins needed to work on their device because you can easily join Synology devices to your domain. And this also saved the college a ton of money because they only needed to purchase the Synology device once instead of paying subscription fees to a service over and over again. So you might ask yourself, why would I need to back up my M365 data in the first place? And the reason is that Microsoft makes it pretty clear that the data on their platform is your responsibility to protect. So while it's their responsibility to take care of the applications and make sure the service stays up and running, they aren't liable if a user deletes your data and you can't get it back. So they specifically say in their terms of service, we recommend that you regularly back up your content and data that you store on the services or store using third-party apps and services. And that's where we come in. So let's talk about a few potential issues that you might run into that our device helps with. First is accidental deletion. Users are the bane of any IT team's existence because they're unpredictable. So deleted files, could be uh, removed and impossible to retrieve from M365 after as little as just 14 days. So if you don't have a backup, those files are just gone. Next is recovery speed. That's a huge factor. Even if you are able to work with Microsoft support within that 14 day grace period, you'll still need to wait for them to help you resolve your issue and then you would, would be able to recover your data. Um, and that's really not ideal when you're dealing with data that makes your business run. And lastly, if there is an issue uh, with your network connection or if M365 goes down for some reason, you might still need to be accessed, still need to be able to access all of your files. And with our portal, you can easily navigate through your files, find what you need and download it regardless of whether you even have an internet connection. So now that we know the why we need to back up this data, let's get started thinking about how you're gonna back up that M365 data. So first, you'll have to choose whether you want a local backup or a cloud backup. So with cloud to cloud, it can be easier to start up. You know, you can get, get started setting things up uh, more quickly because you don't actually need hardware to get started. Um, and you can scale your storage uh, potentially a bit easier uh, because it is cloud storage and you can essentially just buy more. With cloud to local, 
you get the advantage of extremely quick recovery speeds and, and it's easier to access that data. So once again, if we were talking about an internet outage, you would only be able to access that data if it was stored locally on your network. Um, the other advantage, uh, one of the other advantages, is that there are no recurring costs. So you don't have to pay subscription fees every month or every year. Um, and that really is a huge benefit for any business that is on a budget, which is all businesses, of course. Now, with Active Backup for Microsoft 365, you can locally back up your data for OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Exchange Online. And I want to show you what it looks like to create a new backup task within our software. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here we are in Disk Station Manager, and I'll go ahead into Active Backup for Microsoft 365. You can see here that we open up to our Overview tab, and you can see that we've got backups currently running for Drive, Mail, SharePoint Sites, Contacts, and Calendars. We've also got a backup summary here, so we can get an overview of the past five weeks worth of backups. You can see if we've got a green circle here, everything's successfully completed. And if we've got an orange exclamation point, there's something we might want to look into a little bit further. For instance, there was a backup task that was canceled last Tuesday. We can also see our service usage. So we can see that in this case, Drive is taking up most of the data with mail, calendar, contacts, and site data uh, taking a backseat. We can also look at our users and see how much data they're taking up to see if they're, they're hogging any of that uh, data and we might have to give them a talking to. Uh, I'll go ahead into our task list and you can see that I've already got a task created. Now, if you wanted to create a brand new backup task, you can click create and create a new backup task. We'll click next here. And you can see that there's some information that we need in order to get this backup task created. We have a fantastic tutorial on our site. You can just click right into it and it gives you step-by-step -step information on how to get your backup task started. So it, it really just provides uh, all of this information, your tenant ID, application ID. It'll actually generate a, a certificate file for you and you will just place your password that you create during that process in right here and you'll click next and you will create that backup task. So I already have one created here. So if I click here and I go to edit, I can show you exactly some of the more personalized options that you'll have once you do create your own task. So if we go into user, we can see that we've already got some users that we are backing up all of their information, whether it's drive, mail, their archive mailbox, their contacts, or their calendar. Um, and I've also got some things that are selectively chosen uh, for different users. So we can go through all of these different users and select various different things. We can choose an entire service and we can back up all of the data for that, or we can uh, back up an entire user throughout all of their services. The same idea exists here for the group. We can back up an entire service or we could back up a specific group and we can go into our SharePoint sites and choose which of those SharePoint sites we want to back up. One really awesome feature that we have is our auto discovery service. So what you can do here is you can have it so that when you create a new user, a new group, or a new SharePoint site within Microsoft 365, you can automatically back that up to your Synology device. So the reason this is fantastic is that you don't have to individually go in and create these backups. This is all just fully automated. And if you want to, you can go back later and you can say, okay, I didn't want all of that uh, data for this specific user. I just wanted to get their drive data uh, and I don't want anything else. So it, it gives you that freedom, but it also protects you by automatically backing up the information. In our policy tab here, you can see your options for your, your backup policy. So whether you want a continuous backup, a manual backup, or a scheduled backup, and you've also got your file version retention policy. So you can either preserve all of the versions of this data, or you can just uh, keep a certain number of days of those historical versions for those to be preserved. So it, it really is pretty much that simple. You just create this backup task and then you let it run and all of your data is backed up on your Synology device.
All right, now that we know what it looks like to back up our data, what options do we have to recover that data? Now you'll be glad to know that you can either restore single files or you can batch restore multiple files. You can either restore directly to Microsoft 365 or you can export directly to your computer. And you can also grant permissions to users to allow them to recover files on their own, which would save your IT team a ton of time and energy um, just by doing that. So let me show you what the recovery portal looks like. So here we are back in Disk Station Manager, and I'm going to open up our Active Backup for Microsoft 365 portal. So this will open up our Restore portal, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to search for our user, John Snow. Click on John here and click OK. And this takes us to John's drive. You can see um, my colleagues were doing a whole bunch of restores in the past, and you can see a whole bunch of other folders that are being used uh, for for John down at the bottom here you can see some of the different backups that were done so we've got uh, versions from the 20th the 17th the tw the 11th etc um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually search for John's mail so you can see all of these different inboxes uh, on the left and I, John was complaining, you know, he said that he um, deleted an email a couple months ago and it had to do with elves and it was super important, but uh, but he wasn't able to find it. So let's search for elves here. Uh, and OK, we got a couple hits. So let's look into this one here. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is that neither in the subject nor the body of this email is the word elves. And that's because we actually do search through attachments. So this PDF has elves crawling all over it um, and and we were able to find it uh, because we used the search in active backup for microsoft 365 so imagine we want to go ahead and restore this email you can check right here you can click restore and you can see exactly where that file will be restored it's going to uh, save it right to this folder if i click ok here but i want to show you one more thing that you can do which is exporting uh, so if you were to export you would actually get the option to download this directly to your local device. Um, so you've got either of those options available to you, and it, it, it really is this simple. You just come in, you've got your historical versions, and you can pick which folders, which files you want to restore or export to your local device. Okay, so we've got our backup task set up, and we can recover our data. But what happens if our primary backup goes down? We should set up a secondary off-site backup to protect against floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, or even just damage to the primary device that requires downtime. Synology's solution for this is snapshot replication. You can take snapshots of the shared folder where your M365 backup data is being stored and replicate that data to your secondary location. Let me show you what that looks like. So here we are back in Disk Station Manager once again. I'm going to go ahead and click into our snapshot replication. And you can see we start up in our overview tab. So we can see exactly how much data is being replicated currently, how much we're just snapshotting, and how much doesn't have any scheduled protection currently. I'll go into the snapshots tab and you can see that we've got one folder that we've got replicating, two other folders that have scheduled snapshots, and then three other folders that we don't currently have scheduled protection for. In our replication tab, we can see our task that is currently being replicated to another device. If I go into info here, we can see the source server and the destination server. We can see the last successful run and when it will run next. And if we go into statistics, we can get a little bit more detail about the recent successful run. So for instance, how long it took for that run to complete and how much data was transferred during that run. Now I can go into action here and click edit and we can change the schedule for this replication. So once again, we can schedule it for up to every five minutes. I'll go into the recovery tab here to show you how you would get some of this information back. And you can see once again, that this is the replicated folder. I can click recover and choose a previous version. 
and then I can click browse and I could look through uh, all of this information and I can check to see and make sure that this is the version that I do want to restore. And I'll exit out of here once I've confirmed that. And then I can just go to action and restore to this snapshot. So it, it really is that simple to get your data back in the, uh, the case of an issue, uh, in the case that your um, primary data somehow uh, you know, went missing. Um, and you can just restore that back to your uh, original device. Well, hopefully by this point you're sold on what you can do with our software, but let's talk about how you can choose the right device that's right for you. Some of the most important things to consider are the amount of data that you plan to use on the device, taking into consideration all of the users, groups, and SharePoint sites that you have in your environment. Next, think about the daily change data. In order to keep versions of the backups, we'll need to keep both the original information and that changed data, so that will be a factor in determining how much space you need. Next, think about retention requirements. Some organizations need to keep data for several years, so it's important to think about that before deciding how much space you need to prepare for. And finally, think about your future needs. Typically thinking three to five years down the line, will be best when considering how much you need to scale your device in the future. In order to help you find out how big your backup will need to be, Synology has set up an article on our website which provides step-by-step -step instructions to show you how much data you're using in your M365 environment, and that will help you figure out how much space you're gonna need for your Synology device. I hope all of this information helped you learn more about backing up and protecting your M365 environment. I hope you have a great rest of your day and stay safe out there. Thank you.